Hello, and welcome to Chapter Three of the Nature of Code. The title of this chapter is "Oscillating Motion," and that's where I want to get to. What does it mean to model a swinging pendulum? The plucking of a guitar string, wave forms. How do we model and visualize all of those in code in P5JS? But before I can get to those examples, I need to build up the building blocks of the tools and knowledge that we'll need to make those. So the starting point is really trigonometry. I need to look at the trigonometric functions, sine, cosine, tangent. You might have heard of those. You might be studying them now. Might have studied them many, many years ago. I'm going to review all of those. But before I can even get to that, I just want to talk about the concept of an angle. In trigonometry, the idea of an angle is often found in what's known as a right triangle. A right triangle being a triangle where one of the angles is 90 degrees, and then we might be looking at this particular angle of the triangle and evaluating it for some purpose. We are also going to see that angles are really fundamental to the way that we describe the path, the perimeter, the circumference of a circle. So let's say I have a circle like this. And the radius is defined as the distance between the center to the edge of the circle. I might look at a given point on that circle based on the angle relative to this horizontal axis. So the question becomes: What are the units of measurement for an angle, and what can I do with angles in P5JS? The starting point of what I want to look at in P5JS is rotation based on an angle. 90 degrees is a right angle. Looking back at the circle, you might think about oh, 360 degrees—a full rotation all the way around a circle. That's 360 degrees. Halfway across this angle is 180 degrees. So these are common measurements in the unit of degrees. Most computer graphic systems, however, do not work with measurements in degrees. They work with measurements in a unit known as radians. Now, P5 will actually let you work with either degrees or radians, and I will show you how to make that designation. But I think it's really useful for us to practice thinking and working in radians. There will be some conveniences for that in future examples, and it will reveal the beauty and wonderfulness of this magic number, so to speak, pi. So first, let's look at some common angles and their corresponding measurement in radians. Zero degrees is zero radians. 180 degrees is pi radians, and I'm using the Greek letter pi to indicate the the value of pi. However, in P5, we're going to see that that's written out with the letters P I. Both in capitals. The value of pi is 3.14159, and so on and so forth. It's an irrational number, probably the most famous number in mathematics, because the decimal places go on forever with no repeating pattern. 360 degrees is two pi, two times pi, or if you were if we were doing this in P5, would be written out as the constant two underscore pi. So where does this number come from? Why do we care about it so much? And why is this unit of measurement called radians? Well, it all goes back to this particular diagram. If I were to draw what is known as a unit circle, meaning a circle where the radius is of length one, and if I were to take a string and wrap it around the circumference, the perimeter of that circle, and then unfurl that string and measure it, its length would be. Two pi. So if it were one meter, if the radius was one meter, the length would be two pi. The length, the circumference of the circle would be two pi meters. Pi is the value of the ratio of the circumference of a circle, the length of the perimeter of a circle,、um, divided by its diameter. Because in this case, the diameter would be two, and the length of the full circle is two pi. If I wanted to think about what 90 degrees is in pi, 90 degrees is well pi divided by two. It's the length of this much of the arc of the circle itself. So this is why pi is so important. It's fundamental to the study of geometry, of how we look at and define circles, of how we look at and define the angles of right triangles, and so much more that we're going to need as I build all these examples throughout this chapter in P5JS. 
So where do I want to begin though with, the, with this? I want to just go back to this idea of rotation. We want to rotate by an angle. We could maybe do that in degrees. We could maybe do that in radians. Let's look at both of those things in code itself. So here I have a very simple P5.js sketch that is doing just one thing, drawing a rectangle in the center of the canvas. So presumably I could do something like say, hey, rotate that rectangle by 90 degrees and uh, rerun the sketch. And I'm going to put auto refresh on so that it constantly updates. So first of all, it's completely gone. What happened here? So I'm not going to get into this aspect of it in full detail in this video. I have a whole separate video about transformations in P5.js. But when I'm working with rotation, I need to be conscientious, not just about the angle that I want to rotate something by, but like around what point of origin do I want to rotate the thing about? So I want this rectangle to rotate around its center. I'm going to need to use the translate function. And if you've never used Translate before, again, I'll refer you to that other video that explains this in more detail. Once I've translated to 200, 200, I need to then draw the rectangle at 0, 0 because the origin point is now at 200, 200. And then I'm rotated by 90 degrees. That doesn't look like 90 degrees, right? If, this, if the rectangle is like this at 0 degrees, then it should be perfectly vertical at 90 degrees. Well, the reason is, is natively, uh, the computer, P the JavaScript, P5.js, whoever is reading our instructions is thinking in terms of radians. It's not a person. There's no person reading the instructions. If I do want to work with the unit of measurement degrees in my code, then in setup, I can change the mode of P5.js to angle mode degrees. And once I've done that, you can see I now have this a rectangle rotated perfectly by 90 degrees. And there might be some reasons why. I mean, I, I, I can think of actually a really convenient reason to do this right now. What if I were to make a variable called angle, set it to zero, uh, put angle inside of the rotate function, and then say, okay, every frame, 30 frames per second, I want to rotate one degree. Now I have a spinning rectangle. So, this is reason number one, maybe to use degrees. It's a bit, it, could, it might be a little bit more intuitive to sort of think about relative measurements in terms of animation and, and location in a canvas. However, from this point on, I am just going to make the decision to use radians. I feel like here we are in the middle of this Nature of Code playlist. It's a perfectly appropriate time to practice thinking and programming uh, graphics with radians. It will translate to other environments that don't have this option of uh, angle mode degrees. And there may also be some benefits otherwise to um, keeping things in, in radians for other examples that will come in the future that we may or may not see. I think there will be, though. I think there will. So let me comment. Let me change this now to angle mode radians. And you can see like, whoa, this makes sense, right? It's spinning super, super fast. Because if instead of one full rotation being 360 degrees, one full rotation is about 6.28. Is that right? Something that's, what's that number called again? Tau, right? So there's actually a whole other, we could get off on a very long tangent about whether we should be using pi or tau, but tau is a Greek letter that's commonly used to uh, stand in for two pi radians. The point is, one radian is almost one sixth of the way all the way around a circle. So we're going to get there in six frames, which is really fast in terms of a 30 frames per second animation. So if I'm using radians, I might want to use a smaller number, like maybe I'm going to say 0 0.05. And we can see this maps a little bit more closely um, to what I had before. Smaller numbers for working with angles and radians. Before I move on to the next video where I want to look more uh, formally at angular motion, um, I just want to point out one important sort of like tidbit here. Look at how this uh, rectangle is rotating. It's rotating in a clockwise direction. Why is that? And is that what you expected it to be? After all, I have been drawing my diagrams over here like this. Oh, this angle is 45 degrees. So if I had a rectangle and rotated it by 45 degrees, I should see it rotate like that. But in P5, it rotated the other way. It rotated this way. It rotated down, positive 45 degrees or positive pi divided by 4. 
<laughs> That's what that would be, right? If pi is 180, pi divided by 2 is 90, pi divided by 4 is 45 degrees, went this way. So why is that? Well, it has to do with the fact that, once again, in a sort of like mathematical diagram of a Cartesian plane, the y-axis points upwards. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But in a computer graphics window, uh, even though I've translated 0, 0 to be in the center, the positive direction is still down. So I could do things like use the scale function to sort of flip the y-axis and kind of get into all sorts of like wonkiness there. But I think I'm going to keep our world still pointed in the traditional computer graphics way down. Um, and in which case, so a positive angle is by definition uh, moving in the clockwise direction. So if you're looking for an exercise to do at the end of this video, which I'm going to tackle immediately in the next one, what would it mean to have this rectangle speed up as it is rotating, slow down as it is rotating? Could I create an example of, say, a uh, Wheel of Fortune wheel that I spin and slowly over time it's slowing, slowing down and coming to a stop? How would I deal with the mechanics of motion when we're talking about angular motion, spinning and rotating? That's what I'm going to look at in the next video.